Hi folks, I am Alan Watts and we're cutting through the matrix. It, it does get monotonous really as I know, uh, showing you or exposing you the techniques that are used upon you to make you go along with uh, what the big governments of the world want, which is depopulation, uh, a managed society, an ordered society, in other words, a, dicti- a dictatorial society where agencies run you from birth to death, but they also want to vastly reduce the population. And they're using climate change, which is just changes in the weather, which has always happened forever, always will, uh, and all this bogus stuff to scare us into compliance, along with uh, sustainable development, really. That's the whole point of it. And they're blaming us for global warming or or changes in the weather, which is such a farce. It's it's, it's too funny to even uh, think about. But so much has been exposed about their nonsense. Put that way, be very kind and say nonsense. uh, And their fudge figures that have been exposed over and over again. But it doesn't matter, as I say, it won't matter, they'll keep on at it because the Club of Rome dreamed up this plan, they're the premier tank for the UN, think tank for the UN, and they won't change it, no matter what happens. Uh, Even though we're under deep freezes across the whole planet right now, it won't make any difference about global warming, that's the mandate. And the bureaucratic uh, prostitutes will parrot this until they die, as long as their paychecks come in. This article here is from Mail Online. It's January the 24th. It says, Another climate change blunder. First it's melting glaciers. Now natural disaster claim is debunked by Daniel Martin, January 24th. The world's leading climate change scientists have been caught out making unfounded claims about global warming for the second time in just over a week. Experts appointed by the United Nations said rising temperatures were to blame for an increase in the number and severity of natural disasters such as hurricanes and floods. But it's emerged that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change based the statement made in 2007 on an unpublished report that had not been properly reviewed by other scientists. Not reviewed, it was just a bogus claim. But it fitted the agenda, says the report's author has since withdrawn the claim, saying there's not enough evidence to link climate change to worsening natural disasters and criticised the use of his data as completely misleading. Actually, this guy stood up at the meeting in Copenhagen when Al Gore was reading it and using it and says, I never wrote that. (laughs) That's what he said. It follows the IPCC's admission that it was wrong to state in its influential 2007 fourth assessment report that the Himalayan glaciers would melt by 2035. That assertion was based on speculation featured in an eight-year-old article in New Scientist magazine. New Scientist magazine, I think, is on board completely with all the agendas. The latest revelation means more embarrassment for the climate change lobby because worsening natural disasters were a central plank of arguments at the recent UN climate summit in Copenhagen. Barack Obama used the claims when he said last autumn, more powerful storms and floods threaten every continent. Climate change minister Ed Miliband has claimed that floods such as those which devastated parts of Cumbria last year could be widespread if global warming goes unchecked. Then he said last month, Events in Cumbria give a foretaste of the kind of weather runaway climate change could bring. Abroad, the melting of the Himalayan glaciers, so here's again him reading this utter fiction, (laughs) that feed the great rivers of South Asia could put millions of people at risk of droughts. The The IPCC's 2007 report said the world had suffered rapidly rising costs due to extreme weather related events since the 70s, suggesting global warming was to blame. But the claim was taken from a then unpublished report by Robert Muir Wood, head of research at London-based consultancy Risk Management Solutions. When Dr. Muir Wood released the report, he added the caveat, We find insufficient evidence to claim a statistical relationship between global temperature increase and catastrophe losses, (laughs) damage caused by natural disasters. The IPCC said it would investigate the false claim and could withdraw it. Professor Jean Pascal van Ypersel, vice president of the IPCC, said we are reassessing the evidence and will publish a report on national disasters and extreme weather with the latest finding. Dr. Muir would attack the way his evidence was used. He said the idea that catastrophes were rising in cost 
partly because of climate change is completely misleading. We could not tell if it was just an association or cause and effects. Also, our study included 2004 and 5, which was when there was some major hurricanes. If you took those years away, then the significance of climate change vanished. So here you go. They take reports, push them out of all reality, and use them as facts to get their political agenda through. And that's what it is. It's a political agenda. I hope you all realize it's a political agenda. Now, also, uh, in the American Thinker, there's an article on a similar thing. It says the CRU was but the tip of the iceberg on climate gates. January 22, 2010. Not surprisingly, the blatant corruption exposed at Britain's premier climate institute was not contained within the nation's borders. Just months after the climate gate scandal broke, a new study has uncovered something uh, compelling evidence that our government as a U.S. principal climate centers have also been manipulating worldwide temperature data in order to fraudulently adv- advance the global warming political agenda. Not only does the preliminary report, the PDF is here for it, by the way, you can download that, indicate a broader network of conspirators, but also challenges the very mechanisms which, by which global temperatures are measured. Back with more after this break. Hi folks, I am Alan Watts and this is Cutting Through the Matrix, reading an article about the global warming scam and how those in the U.S. also get in the act, all the big official centers. It's from the American Thinker. It says here, last Thursday, certified consulting meteorologist Joseph Dalio and computer expert E. Michael Smith appeared together on Cousy TV, and the video link to that is here on the site. I'll put these links up on my site at the end of the show. Remember, cutting through the matrix.com. It says to discuss the Climate Gate American style scandal they had discovered. This time out, the alleged perpetrators are the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, that's NOAA and the, the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies. I shouldn't be surprised that NASA's in it, because Hansen, the head of the NASA bunch, is actually an environmental, not just activist. He's a greatest pal of Al Gore. In fact, it was his first uh, claims that put Al Gore up in the, the limelight about the global warming issue. And Mr. Hansen's also uh, backing um, greeny movements to do terrorist acts at home by knocking down dams and stuff like that, and wrecking factories. No kidding. To turn it all back to this uh, natural uh, green world that should have been in the first place. But they themselves, of course, won't be living eating grass, I'd imagine. But anyway, to get back to this article, it says, uh, it says, um, NOAA stands accused by the two researchers of strategically deleting cherry-picked cooler reporting weather observation stations from the temperature data it provided the world through its National Climatic Data Center. That's the NCDC. Dalio explained to show host and Weather Channel founder John Coleman that while the Hadley Center in the UK had been the subject of recent scrutiny, we think NOAA is complicit, if not the real ground zero, for the issue. And their primary accomplices are the scientists at GISS who put the altered data through an even more biased regimen of alterations, including intentionally replacing the dropped NOAA readings, that's the temperature readings, with those of stations located in much warmer locales. You see how they can fudge it all? As you'll soon see, the ultimate effects of these statistical transgressions on the reports which influence climate alarm and subsequently world energy policy are nothing short of staggering. Although satellite temperature measurements have been available since 78, most global temperature analyses still rely on data captured from land-based thermometers scattered more or less about the planet. It is that data which NOAA receives and disseminates, although not before performing some sleight of hand on it. Smith has done much of the heavy lifting involved in analyzing the NOAA GISS data and software, and he chronicles his often frustrating experiences at his fascinating website. And you can link to that from this page as well. I'll put these up at rememberCuttingThroughTheMatrix.com at the end of the show. Their detail seekers will find plenty to satisfy, divided into easily navigated sections, some designed specifically for us geeks, but most readily approachable to readers of all technical data. And he goes on, 
and on to show you how they scammed and fudged all the statistics. It's astonishing. You know, even the top people um, at, at the IPCC, in fact, the top person at the IPCC was taking thousands and thousands of dollars in grants for his own pri- private studies on the fudged statistics and the fudged glacial menta- melting nonsense. They're all making such incredible money off this. It's, it's just astonishing that people are so naturally corrupt. Uh, that's, at least that's what I feel anyway. 